Okay, I'm going to step through the process that I used to make some font files. Uh, these were font files that were for a Shakuhachi fingering chart. So I have some calligraphic images in here. They're .png files. And I also have a font starter .svg, which is a template which will make things a lot easier. In the description under this video, I have a link to where you can get that. So first, what needs to be done is to start in Inkscape, because that's the great free tool that we're going to be using. I found it to be pretty good. And I'm going to import, or actually not import, but open the font starter dot svg file. And then I'll maximize it. Next, I'm going to import all four of those dot png files. And when it comes up to this pop-up that says link or embed image, I use the default embed. Then I'll slide it off of the template and move it out of the way. And I'm going to do that for all four images. Click OK. Slide that one out of the way. Go for the next one. Open. Click OK. Slide it out of the way. Now the fourth image. Now that I have all four images on my palette, or whatever this area is called, I'm going to go to Path and Trace Bitmap. Because what I need to do is turn each of these images from a .png image to a to a vector image and trace bitmap will allow me to do that so I'll drag the first image onto the template resize it to its correct size click update when I click update I normally expect to see something in the preview area here. I don't know if that's a bug with Inkscape or if it's a bug in my process, but the defaults that are provided here seem to work OK. And so I'm just going to press OK. Move my vectorized image back out of the way and delete the PNG image. And I'm going to do that for all four images. Resize it. Click Update. Click OK. Drag the vectorized image out of the way. And delete the PNG image. Grab the next image. Bring it onto the template. Resize it. Click Update, click OK, drag the vectorized image out of the way, and delete the PNG image. Normally, you're going to have a lot more images in a font set. This should give you an idea of what needs to be done. It might be a little bit more tedious and a little bit difficult to keep track of them when you do it for real, but for demonstration purposes it should be great. And I'll move that vector image out of the way and delete the PNG image. So now that I have all my vectorized images, I can close the trace bitmap window 
and now I just need to put them into a font file. So I'm going to go into the SVG font editor. That was by clicking under the text in the toolbar. And the template gave us font 1. So I'm going to click on that to select it. Change the name from SVG font 1 to something more meaningful like my font set. Go to the Glyphs tab, and now the template is what gave us all the glyphs associated with the keystrokes. Glyph 1 is for A, Glyph 2 is for B, and so on. The template has all the alphabetic characters and all the numerical characters. I'm only going to be using A, B, C, and D at first at least. And so in the preview text, I'm going to change that from saying sample text to A, B, C, and D. I'll move the first image back onto the template. That's going to be glyph 1 and associated with the A key. So I'll highlight that, then get curves from selection, and you can see my character just shows up in the preview area. Drag that out of the way, go to the next image. It'll be glyph 2 and for the B character, get curves from image. And you see that one in the preview area. Slide it out of the way, go for the next one. That'll be glyph 3. I'll get the curves from the selection, and that one shows up in the preview area, and now I'll go to the last one that I have here. And that'll be Glyph 4. Now, for the demonstration purposes, I'm going to create a couple more characters. And for these, I'll draw them using the calligraphy tool here. And you'll see that it already selects it, actually. So there it's selected. And I'll assign that to Glyph 5 for E. And when I click Get Curves from Selection, I don't see it there yet because I don't have it in the preview text. So I'll type the E in the preview text, and you'll see that image there. I'll drag that image off to the side. Um, something else I want to show is that if you have an image that's a double image, And this one will be for, select the whole thing, and this will be for glyph 6, which will be an F. Now when I do get curves from selection, and type the F in the preview text, you'll see that it only gave me one of the squiggles that I drew. So what I found that is the way to handle this is to go back to the template, click on it, click on the images to select them, and then depress Control and then the K key, Control plus K. And I'll select Glyph 6 again and get curves from selection. And you'll see that now it has both of the little squiggles there. The control K's combine, and I'm not exactly sure what it does, but it combines paths. So now we have um, all the images in your font file. So the font file is actually complete at this point. So 
So we're going to go to File, Save As. We're going to give it a meaningful name. Call it My Font File. Click Save. You can close In Inkscape at that time. And you'll see that I have my, mon my, my font file SVG file um, here in my folder. Now it's all ready to be converted using an online font converter. Um, just Google online font converter, you'll find one. And you'll want to convert it to a TTF file. And that's it.